in the bottom left playing as the green American player one. We have Spodius versus Sneaky Dragon playing Tenry up in the top right. Now, they are playing on Treaton River, which is a recreation of one of the original quick play maps in the game. Obviously, the large difference here between this and Tantan Oasis, but the main thing about this map that people should keep in mind is that units that cost over 600 gold are not available. So, no witches, no blister, you know, obviously no trebuchet, but no golems, no dragons, and no rifles. Here we go. Seeing both players do the night opening on this. There is a different opening you can do where you take a thief and go for a capture on that village instead. But the night opening is lined up so that you can decapture that enemy village on turn one. And that village exists in that capacity to block early wagon shenanigans. So both players just choosing the, I guess you would say like the aggressive option with these knights because the really cool thing about this uh, night opening is that it gives you a lot of map control and pressure. Whereas if you go for more of a thief opening, you're investing gold into a unit that isn't going to be able to be out on the map and be aggressive. Okay, let's have a look here. <clears throat> so Spodius sends his commander down to the south, just being kind of aggressive with the knight right now. And he can do that because, you know, Forest is protecting this knight. Is going to. Ooh, good knight crit. Ooh, so sneaky dragon from across the map is going to be a bit aggressive and is decapturing this village with Tenry, or as opposed to Spodius, who is kind of out on the side on his own. Not really going to be able to be much support for his army right now. Ooh, but Spodius with the good wagon play gets the spear in for the spear crit. Good retaliation. And there isn't too much that can challenge this right now. I guess Tenry could go in and get a hit, but that's a big spear wall from Spodius. And Sneaky Dragon has quite a lot of knights, uh, which aren't really going to be able to deal with these spears just now, but he is going to use the mobility of the knights to harass the sides now that those are a bit more vulnerable. And Tenry being very aggressive here. Oh, a good block with the wagon. That will keep her safe. The wagon being, of course, quite vulnerable. Ooh, and I like this play. Decides not to kill those units and just leaves them alive because he can finish them next turn and they aren't going to be able to do much damage to the army. So he gets the village capture. Body is actually in a pretty good position right now. Winning on both of the edges of the map. Right, Knight retreats, mage moves up to cover from the harpy. This harpy in the south gets a free hit on the emmerich because why not? Ooh, Tenry's in a little bit of a scary place, but spear wall moves up to cover. All right, dog moves in, finishes off that sword and this sword moves up, finishes off the knight. What have we got here? Spodius moving his army up into the center and has a ton of gold, so we might see like double knight builds. Harpy Knight Archer. All right, that's really good. And that balloon's in a great position to back that up. Ooh, big harpy crit onto the commander. And there's not much that can cover this. Like the archer can hit the harpy, but that's it really. Ooh. Nice play. Weakens the village with the archer, allowing the injured Tenry to. Uh, finish it off and get Groove. And we're seeing Spodius sitting on his Groove. Hasn't been able to... Hasn't had the good opportunity yet to put a Crystal down. But he could be saving it for a special occasion. And here we go. Crystal comes down. Very aggressive front Crystal. And yeah. Ooh, good Knight crawl to that Spear. And yeah, this Knight is effectively on a mountain. So, in a really nice place. Damn, that's a big formation. And Sneaky's gonna have to do something about this. 
just walks up and heals with the commander. I was actually expecting some kind of groove to come in, maybe snag one of the archers. But it looks like Niki's just content to kind of back off. Allow Spotius to push forward a bit. Finishes off that knight. And that though that knight's in a really defensive position. Oh, spears could crit it, so. We'll see. Oh, this harpy! That's such a cool position for the harpy to be in. It's, it's actually really difficult for a mage to chase a harpy into the, all this forest. Well, that harpy's gonna be able to shut down the hideout. This body is just continuing to push forward into the center. <gasps> nice thief capture. Really gonna drain Sneaky's bank right now. What's Sneaky gonna do? All right, Archer, Spear Crit. Ooh, this could be very dangerous actually for Spotius. Because for as great as the crystal is, it does leave you, your army kind of vulnerable to getting killed. This is all sitting in one location. Ooh, nice thief steal. And we're just gonna see sneaky kind of posture in front of this army and do quite a bit of damage. All right, will Spotius be able to get a good counter attack here? That is a Tenry without much, with like basically no defense, but there are two units in front. Ooh, that's not something you can see every day. Archer takes down the Harpy and then opens up the Mage, killing the Balloon. And will Spotius be able to continue the pressure? He might just back off though. The big wall of archers from Sneaky to push into. Oh, Crystal. Yeah, there it goes. And we're just gonna see Sneaky really just punish this push actually. And what was looking like a really strong game from Spotius? This is just like this play here just shows like the real vulnerability of Emmerich where sure you can have like a really nice formation that's like got a lot of defense but you're just kind of a sitting duck during that. But I think if I look at this time on the clock right now he might have just panicked and said Oh, I need to get a win. And that's actually a really nice play. Archer, then followed up by Harpy Crit. This is like pretty safe. Like there's only gonna be an Archer hit on this uh, the wind Harpy at most. Ooh, what are we gonna see? Grabs the Harpy. Okay, so that, that is no longer a safe Harpy. Gonna go down to the Mage. I'm actually a little surprised he didn't grab the thief, but I guess he wanted to grab the air unit because that means that this mage, even if it goes down, he can still continue to push and pressure. Alright, what are we going to see from Spotius? Continues to harass the side. Ooh, suicides. Not the best option, but went for it. I guess it means that... Actually, no, because the mage is still going to be able to finish off the RP, so... Not ideal. Yeah, Spotius is just kind of juking out with what he has left, but that's a big wall of archers from Sneaky. I don't really know how he's going to be able to uh, deal with that. And at this point, all Sneaky needs to do is take out enough of the defense in front of the stronghold that he can just uh, throw knights at it. Ooh, good use of the wagon to line up a dog crit. There's been a lot of these really cute plays with transport this game. Lots of uh, using balloons and I guess wagons in this case. Ooh, interesting. Just recaptures the village. Okay, and just moves the wagon into position to pick up the mage. Damn, that mage is pretty tanky. I actually really like this balloon position. And the mage was uh, unable to attack the harpy. 
Why is he's holding on? But his spear count is so low now that he can't deal with these knights. Like he has his own knights. But then you look at Sneaky's army, he's got some spears left over. Commander is uh, a pretty healthy position as well. Okay, and <laughs> just goes straight for the strongholds. Gets the kill on the mage. Yeah, he's just gonna do a ton of damage to this army right now. Injure the knights pretty heavily. And yeah, he just needs to line up his army so that he can get a follow up hit on the stronghold. And I don't know how I feel about this mage position. That's a bit vulnerable. Like, this knight can crit that. But I guess this knight really wants to crit this instead, so... Okay. And now Sneaky having left a lot of his army in a vulnerable position. It might have overextended. He's gonna lose a ton of units this turn. This should protect us. And now Spotius can drop Crystal. But the time! Five minutes left on the clock. Is Spotius actually gonna be able to finish this? Or will Sneaky manage to push through? It does have like 12 minutes left on the clock, so. Just playing a little bit quicker. And Sneaky realizes that he's in a vulnerable position, pulls back. I think like the, one of the main stories of this game is both players went for kind of like a huge push on the opposing, opponent's stronghold before they were ready. When Treaton is more about building up a large edge across the map. Constantly like diminishing your opponent's economy and overwhelming them eventually. And both of these players kind of saw, saw red and just were like, I just want to finish the game right now. Three archers to kill a spear. Okay. The sneaky, just gonna you know, punish Claudius' push. And yeah, Claudius doesn't really have much of an army left. So yeah, both of them just kind of overextending. And now Spotius. Doesn't really have much of an army left. He's gonna fight it out with what he has, but this game could end very soon. And yeah, he's just kind of going all in right now. I don't know if there's much else he can do. An archer, three archers to kill the harpy. Oh. What a play. Alright, Sneaky. He's just going to continue to hit with what he can. Gets the mage heal. Picks off. Whatever units are nearby. And just deals damage. Yeah, and just slam the knight right into Emmerich. Just slow him down a bit. And uh, Spodius, he's got a minute left on the clock. And actually, this is going to be, I think, the first time out of the tournament. Unless Sneaky gets a, a lethal here. But yeah, neither player able to convincingly end the game. And Sneaky having played just a bit faster. Seven minutes left at the start of this turn. It's looking like he's going to be able to end the game. And yeah, he's just uh, constantly taking good fights as well. We're going into turn 19, probably going to end on turn 20. Oh, good archer hit there, just confirms the kill. I think the mage was slight. No, the mage was full health, so it would have killed, but I guess he just wanted to be sure. And on turn 20, Spotius runs out of time on the clock. And unfortunately falls.
And I will talk about, and this applies to Wargroove in general, because you can get timed out in a bunch of different situations, and the mindset and the trap players fall into is that, and this is me speaking from experience as well as someone who's done this, is that you feel like you're a bit ahead, you look at the clock, you're like, I want to finish this game before I have to worry about time. And then you go for a push that doesn't quite have enough behind it. You're like, I, I think I can finish this. And then your push fails. And then you are stuck in a position where you're like, oh, well, I'm behind now. Or we're even again. And I've just pushed, I've just lost a ton of my momentum going into this game. So you then or like, oh, well, you know, what do I do now? Do I pull back? Do we have a back and forth? But, yeah, it's... It's a hard one. It's really difficult. And what you should do is instead of going for a push to try and win the game if you're not sure, because like, that's like kind of a panic option as well, what you should do instead of that is try and gain more advantage in the game. Like if you are at an advantage, you just swap to a different front, you push that front instead, you do some economic damage, try and pick off some units, get an advantage there, and just keep doing that until you win. And treating is a lot about that. There is far less of a, I just do a big push and win in this game. Because you don't really have the game ending units in this as much. You do have knights, but you don't have dragons as well. So, yeah, I think that, from like an outside perspective, I think that's what happened there. I think Spotius said, thought, oh, I can just push and end the game. Tenry has groove, so I want to end before that becomes a factor. And Emmerich has this big weakness where you put all your army under his crystal, and then his army gets shredded, because even if you're on mountains, like, units aren't invulnerable. Spears still take a lot of damage from archers, even when they're on four defense tiles. So, yeah, it's it's not ideal. So Emric can really suffer from that, where you put your army under the crystal and you're like, cool, it's it's safe now. But uh, that is sadly not the case. But well played to Sneaky. That was a really good back and forth game. Uh, it did go to time, but. It did look like at the end Sneaky was in a very favorable position.